Okay, I think I should be starting. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome back after the holiday break. As we know, there were no lectures over the holidays. Um, for those of you who are with us for the first time, welcome to the Sound Series Meetings with the Sounds and Sorters. And my name is Magda Harzinska Wojcik. I represent the Nanobek Institute for European Studies at the University of Notre Dame and John Paul II Catholic University of Lublin. And I think I, you can also uh, see on the screen uh, Professor Monika Palinska. Monika, if you just speak up. Then... All right, I hope everybody can see you. Monika represents the University of Warsaw in Poland, and uh, we are jointly responsible for this series, in the preparation of which we have been greatly assisted by the Nanobek Institute for European Studies at the University of Notre Dame. And we would like to take this opportunity to express our gratitude to the Nanovic to, for making it all possible. And on a more personal note, I would like to thank my friends and colleagues from the Nanovic Institute at Notre Dame, where I am now, in my home, away from home, for making this expression so much more than just a beautiful term of praise. Thank you. Um, as you know, we have been meeting um, since January and we've had six lectures so far. The recordings are now available at the website of the Nanovic Institute and the direct link will be sent very soon via um, our chat. And we're also planning to bring out a publication of the talks next year. And I think um, I can also add, although, sorry, although quite informally that um, we're planning to continue the the series and the first person to give the talk will be the Jane Margaret Toswell present with us here today. Thank you, Jane. Um, we still have uh, three lectures ahead of us. Um, and uh, let me just draw your attention to a little change of schedule. We shifted the November um, lecture because our fourth first fourth Thursday of the month coincided with Thanksgiving. So um, we shifted that to a week earlier. So that will be on the 16th of November. And we will still remind you of that at the end of um, this talk. So the big, the big news is that, um, that we are going to continue in 2024. So do not despair. Well, it is now time to introduce um, our distinguished speaker, Reverend Professor Raymond Pietkiewicz. Anybody even vaguely interested in Polish translations of the Psalms and the Bible in more general, if they were asked to name one researcher dealing with these topics, they would all unhesitatingly answer Raymond Pietkiewicz, and they would be right. I have been reading the works of Professor Pietkiewicz myself over the last decade, and I continue to reach out for his publications as my first resource, and I have never been disappointed. Professor Pietkiewicz is an amazingly versatile and successful researcher. He earned two PhDs in two widely different disciplines in two years, one in Bibliology at the University of Wrocław in 2003, the other one in Biblical Theology at the Pontifical Faculty of Theology in Wrocław 2004. Four years later, in 2008, Raymond obtained licentiate in Sacred Scripture at the Pontifical Biblical Institute Biblicum in Rome. And another four years later, in 2012, came his postdoctoral degree in Biblical Theology conferred, conferred by the Pontifical Faculty of Theology in Wrocław. Well, that was a busy decade or nine years to be precise. Professor Bielkiewicz is now director of the chair of the Old Testament Exegesis at Pontifical Faculty of Theology in Wrocław, where he previously served for eight years as deputy vice chancellor for academic and educational affairs. Since 2021, he has been editor in chief of the series Eastern and Central European Voices, Studies in Theology and Religion, published by Van de Hoek and Wolfrecht. He lectures on subjects as diverse as Old Testament exegesis and the Hebrew language, while his research focus is on biblical translations, especially Polish ones dating back to the Renaissance and the Reformation. 
Professor Pietkiewicz has published on diverse topics, starting with already mentioned history of biblical translations, but also including Christian humanism and Hebraism, Swiss Renaissance, early printed Jewish books, Reformation history understood very broadly, um, editing, theology, biblical studies, and spirituality to mention but a few areas of his amazing expertise. He has authored four monographs and tens of research papers, and I must admit that I always lose count around 70, so I don't know exactly how many there are, but there are many. They have come out in um, scientific journals and in thematic monographs published all around the world. He has also authored several valuable reviews published, for example, by Cambridge University Press. If you, looked at, if you look at the statistics of, at Academia EDU, most of Professor Pietkiewicz's publications have hundreds and even thousands of reads. Raymond is the initiator and chief editor um, of an impressive enterprise called Biblia Polonorum, the history of the Bible in the Polish language, which has been planned as a six-part book series covering success in successive volumes the history of the Polish biblical translations from their beginnings to the present day. Three of the six volumes, the ones that I have underlined on the screen, um, are going to be Professor Pietkiewicz's individual work. The remaining parts will represent multi-authored volumes. And I think that gives a rough idea about today's speaker's intellectual grandeur. The two volumes that have already come out, volume one and two, which you can see on the screen, are his works. I must add that they represent impressively detailed resources comprising together 13 100 pages. Professor Pietkiewicz's most recent monograph came out in 2020 in Göttingen by Van, Van den Hoek and Ruprecht and is entitled In Search of the Genuine Word of God Reception of the Western West European Christian Hebraism in the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth in the Renaissance. Raymond's publications have not only been appreciated by scholars, um, but they also have received greatest accolades, such as the Book of the Year awarded by the Committee of Theology of the Polish Academy of Sciences. Finally, Raymond is an exceptionally humble researcher. Invited to talk in our series, he replied that he hasn't really got anything new to offer. Well, let me say this. We are all here interested in the old. Uh, Raymond, the, the floor is yours. Before I actually give you over the mic, I will just would like to announce what, what Professor Pietkiewicz asked me to. He will deliver two thirds of his talk himself. And in delivering the remaining one third, he will um, um, have assistance of Dr. Monika Shela uh, Bajinska, who uh, has a PhD in English and is currently working on another PhD following the footsteps of a great um, supervisor, and that will be a PhD in theology dealing with um, dynamic equivalence. So the floor is completely yours right now, and um, I'll give you the screen sharing. Thank you. Thank you for this amazing presentation. Uh... Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can see that. It's yes. still not in the in the in the slide presentation mode. Okay. Yes, we can see that now. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you kindly for inviting me to the seminar series uh, on the Psalms and Psalter, especially to professors. Magdalena Harzińska Wojcik and Monika Opalinska. I do appreciate the opportunity of presenting my paper and sharing some of my research findings with you. My topic is the Psalter in Polish in the Renaissance, an attempt at bibliographical and bibliological uh, synthesis. Uh, my current presentation constitutes an attempt to uh, synthesize information on the achievements of Polish biblical editing in the Renaissance period as regards the Psalter. 
The findings presented here are based on my own research of the whole source material from that period of times of time. 143 editions of biblical prints uh, in the biblical text in Polish. Uh, the chronological uh, range of my research uh, comprises uh, the years from uh, 1518, the appearance of the first biblical print in Polish, uh, to 1638, closing down of uh, an anti-Trinitarian printing house in Raków. First, however, I will discuss very briefly the translations of the Psalter into Polish, preserved in manuscripts and dating from the Middle Ages and the beginning of the Renaissance, for they constitute a kind of prelude to the pro production of print. Some of the old versions were printed. Then I will review the bibliography of Renaissance prints with the text of Psalms uh, in Polish, then I'm going to present the dynamic of uh, Salter editing development in quantitative aspect, qualitative and functional. At the end, I'm going to present the roots causes which were decisive in the emergence and development of the Polish Salter editing. Uh, part one, the Psalter in Polish in manuscripts. Uh, the oldest extant manuscripts as uh, relics of the Polish language testify that the history of translations of the Holy Scriptures into Polish began in the Middle Ages with the translation of Book of Psalms. And not counting the legendary uh, Psalter of St. Kinga, whose existence is presumed as early as the 13th century on the basis of uh, hagiographical evidence, the following biblical monuments in Polish have survived from the Middle Ages and the early Renaissance. The first is Florian Psalter uh, from uh, 14th, 15th century, uh, it's the entire Psalter. Uh, then Psalterium Trilingue, so-called Prague uh, Charter, uh, only with one verse of Psalm 1, is late 14th century. Uh, 14th century. Uh, Medici Charter, so-called Świdziński Charter, with Miserere uh, Psalm, is about 1405. Um, Evangeliary of Canons Regular of Krakow uh, with fragments of uh, Gospel is about 1420. Uh, Queen Sophia Bible, the whole Bible, um, uh, 1455, uh, but the text of Psalter has not survived, but it was probably in the second volume of the Bible. Uh, Puave Psalter, uh, second half of the sen uh, 15th century, it's the entire uh, Psalter. A card of Boesław Ezebki, uh, Psalm 45, is uh, its copy of uh, 15th century original. Uh, Psalter of the prophet David in the translation of Valenti Vrubel. Uh, it's about 1528. We have now uh, two manuscripts with the text of this translation, one in uh, Library of Kurnik and in uh, Jagiellonian University in Krakow. And then translations uh, or fragments of translation of Tomasz of Brudzew. Uh, then Václav prayer book, text of uh, selected Psalms, is from second half of the 15th century. Uh, vigils for the deceased people uh, is manuscript from about 1520. 
and uh, with uh, text of selected psalms. Uh, manuscripts from um, Arch Diocesan Archive of Poznan uh, with Miserere Psalm, is early uh, 16th century, and fragments and quotations scattered throughout various manuscripts, for example, in collections uh, of Latin sermons. And so, in uh, the above uh, list, nine of nine of fifteen uh, manuscripts include psalms. This material allows us to draw some general conclusions about the manuscripts of the Psalter in Polish. The Psalter was a very popular book in medieval and early Renaissance Poland. It was among the most popular books in the Bible used in Poland. By the time the first printed Psalters appeared in Polish, there were several translations in Polish, uh, at least three translations the, all, all of the Psalter. Uh, the Psalter was uh, copied in various publishing forms as part of the whole Bible, uh, the whole books as a separate edition, individual psalms, parts of prayer books. Uh, some relics uh, can be linked to the need for the Polish uh, Psalter for women, lay and religious, and less educated priests who were not fluent in Latin. Uh, the Psalter was translated from the Latin Vulgate, uh, often with extensive use of Czech translations. Um, Psalters in Polish were used as additional aids uh, to the divine office or as books for personal pre prayer and meditation. The uh, second part, Bibliography of Renaissance Prince with the text of the Psalms, Psalms in Polish. How many translations of the Psalms in Polish were printed during the Renaissance? We started with the uh, entire edition of Psalter. The first is Kraków Psalter. Uh, we have two editions, 1532 and 1535. Uh, the second is Psalter translated by Valenty Vrubel, Andrzej Glaber. Uh, we have this translation in eight editions. Uh, then uh, Psalter translated by Mikołaj Ray in two editions, 1546-1515. Psalter uh, translated by Jakub Lubelczyk, one edition, 1558. And then Psalter uh, uh, in Leopolita's Bible, uh, we have two editions uh, of this Bible, 1561 and 1575-77. Uh, uh, so the Psalter is a part of the whole Bible, entire Bible. And then uh, this Psalter was uh, reprinted uh, in 1579 and is so-called trend. Uh, Psalter is a kind of breviary in Polish. Uh, six is uh, the Psalter in the entire edition of the Brest Bible. Uh, we have one edition of the whole Bible, 1563, and uh, then one uh, year later, 1564, uh, this Brest uh, Psalter was uh, reprinted um, in the separate edition. Seven, uh, the Psalter translated by Paweł Milejewski. We have had two editions. Uh, the first, 1563, uh, is lost, and uh, now we have only the second edition, 1587. Uh, eight is Budnis Bible. 
uh, a Bible with the book of Psalms, the so-called Nesfit Bible, 1572, uh, uh, is anti-Trinitarian translation. And then um, Kohanovsky's uh, Psalter, uh, we have, uh, we know now uh, 28 editions, and Kohanovsky's Psalter uh, was reprinted with melodies uh, by Gomułka in uh, 1580. Uh, then is Vujek's Bible. We have uh, one edition of the whole Bible, uh, 1599, and then this uh, Vujek's Psalter was reprinted uh, in 1594, 1616, 1620, uh, 26. 11 is uh, Psalter translated by Maciej Rybinski. Uh, we know nine editions of this Psalter. And the last is a Psalter from the Guides Bible. The uh, first edition of the entire Bible is uh, 1632. And then one year later, uh, this Psalter was uh, reprinted in uh, small format uh, in uh, 1630. Three. So altogether, we have 12 independent translations of the whole Psalter, altogether in 64 editions. And uh, we have also editions of the uh, single Psalms and collections of Psalms. Uh, we can see here the list. So we have 20 um, single psalms, I called them small prints, and three collections. Uh, here we can see uh, one of these so-called small prints. There is uh, Psalm 1 with melody, uh, printed together with the church song a song, a song, this is a title, at a Christian's funeral. Uh, this small print has only four cards, eight pages. It's half of, of printed sheet. And we have 20 uh, prints like, like this. We can see the list here. Uh, part three. Mm quantitative development. How does uh, the printed Psalter in Polish compare in terms of quantity to other parts of the Bible in Poland? In the, the period of the Renaissance, the following biblical translations were produced in total in Polish. Five translations of the whole Bible uh, printed altogether in six editions, and independent uh, translations of the New Testament uh, in 23 editions, excluding editions of the entire Bible, uh, 12 translations of the whole Psalter in uh, 58 editions, ex excluding uh, six editions of the entire Bible. So we have here... Yeah, uh, 64 editions because I count with uh, whole uh, Bibles and uh, in Psalter as a separate book. We have we have 58 editions, uh, six biblical uh, commentaries in uh, seven editions, uh, 21 translations of the individual Psalms and their anthologies altogether in 23 editions. This, uh, they are so-called small prints. I, I call them in this way. Uh, 11 translations on of individual biblical books were fragments or collections altogether in 26 editions. So altogether, we have uh, 65 translations of biblical texts in 143 editions is about 
5,798 printed sheets as uh, whole production of the biblical prints. And for Psalms, uh, we have 23 uh, translations. It's about 50-51%. In altogether 81 editions, it's about 56-57%. Um, uh, and it's about 1,714 printed sheets. It's about 30% of uh, whole production of the biblical prints in the in the Renaissance. Uh, the data show uh, that uh, these these data show show that the Psalter in the Renaissance Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth was the most popular book of the Bible and probably one of the most popular book in general. What was the distribution of the Salter's publishing production for individual denominations present in Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth uh, in 16th and at the beginning of the 17th century? Uh, I only consider separate editions of the entire Psalter, excluding the editions of the entire uh, Bibles. So altogether, we have 12 first editions in 58 editions altogether. And the production is 1,688, about 88 printed sheets. And uh, for Catholics, we have five first editions. It's about... 41, 42 percent. Altogether, 16 editions. It's about 27, 28 percent. And uh, the production is 540 printed sheets. It's about 32 uh, percent. Uh, Protestants' uh, Salter editing is five first editions the same percent. Uh, now, um, 14 uh, editions uh, altogether, uh, 24, about 24 percent, and it's about 20, 21 percent of the whole production of biblical, uh, of uh, Sol Salter um, uh, editing. Polish brethren is nothing. They uh, don't have uh, separate edition of Salter. And then Kochanowski uh, Salter, we have two edition, editions. The first is uh, Kochanowski Salter, and the second is the same uh, translation, uh, but with melodies by uh, Mikołaj Gomułka. And so these two editions, uh, it's uh, about 16, 17%. Uh, altogether, we have 28 edition. It's 48, 49%. It's a 47% of whole production of printed sheets mm -hmm. as regard um, the, the Psalter. Uh, we also need to remember about five translations that were part of the entire Bible. It's Catholic Leopolitas Bible in two editions, a Reformed Brest Bible. Uh, Psalter was also reprinted in 1964. Uh, 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 a Polish Brethren, Neschwitz uh, or Budnis Bible, 1572. Uh, and then Catholic Vujek Bible, 1599. And Reformed Czech Brethren, uh, Gdańsk Bible, 1632. As we can see, the production of uh, Psalters is spread more or less uh, evenly between Catholics and Protestants. Uh, the slightly higher number of sheets 
uh, produced by Catholics is related to their preference for larger book formats. As for Psalter translated by Kochanowski, it is difficult to attribute it to a particular denomination, rather uh, it was the result of Kochanowski's uh, humanist interest in ancient poetry. Now the qualitative development. Uh, so while presenting the qualitative development of Polish biblical editorship, uh, I'm going to present the issues connected with the choice of the basis, the source text for the translations, the format uh, that shapes the content of prints, the choice and adjustment of illustrations, uh, and the application of elements facilitating multifunctional usage of biblical prints. So as for the basis and method of translations, the problem of the source text for the translation of biblical text is, as we know, a complicated matter. On the one hand, the translators and publishers often specify the source text in their introductions. During the Renaissance, they had two basic language versions to choose from, Latin and Hebrew. The Latin Psalter, translated by St. Jerome, existed in three variants. Psalterium Romanum from about 383, an old Latin text slightly revised based on the Septuagint. Psalterium Gallicanum from about 387, a translation based on the Septuagint. And uh, Psalterium Juxta Hebraeus from about 393, the translation was, paid, uh, was from the Hebrew language. The most popular Latin version used in the liturgy was the Psalterium Gallicanum, which was found in the Vulgate editions. The only translator to consciously choose Psalterium Gallicanum as the basis for translation and to justify this choice was the Polish priest, Jakub Bujek. On the other hand, it must be borne in mind that the translator's choice was not limited to, the, to one version from which they translated. Consulting other language versions, including translations into modern languages, was a usual practice, which makes the choice of the source text for a translation always a complex matter. From which versions did the Polish translators of the Psalter translate? We take into account their declarations provided in the introductions and prefaces, as well as uh, contemporary research. As can be seen, the most common source for translations of the Psalter into Polish was the Latin Vulgate. It was used by both Catholics and Protestants, so we have six translations into it. The three non-Catholic translations included in the entire Bibles, like Brest Bible, Nashville's uh, Bible. Bible, and Gdańsk Bible, were translated from the Hebrew Bible. Prose, paraphrases, and poetic translations were translated from Latin and French poetic paraphrases, so we have three translations in total. As, for, uh, as far as the method of translation is concerned, uh, Simplifying the problem somewhat, three methods can be distinguished. Literal translation, we have seven such translations. Poetic paraphrases, three translations. And prose paraphrase, we have two translations. Three of the poetic paraphrases included musical notes. The format of a book decided on its purpose and functions. The formats for the Salter editions are shown in the tables, so we can see the amount of editions of SOTA produced in given formats in subsequent 20-year periods, and below the amount of SOTA produced in given formats by individual denomination groups. The choice of a format was connected with the size of a book, its functions and addresses, Bigger formats like folio and quarto were well suited for printing the text of the Bible and the New Testament with a sizable academic apparatus and were targeted at educated readers involved in religious polemics. 
We have only one edition of the Salta in folio. It is Lubelczyk's Salta from 1558. Uh, it was a poetic paraphrase equipped with melodies, arguments, and numerous commentaries of a theological and moral nature written in the spirit of the Reformation. The most popular formats for Salters were the Handy Quarto and Octavo. These were easy to carry books. They could be read at home and in church. In the 17th century, even smaller formats came out, uh, which was strictly connected with the function of the Psalter. During the period of this period of time, we could observe the, dom uh, the domination of the Counter Reformation, which marginalized the Protestants for whom the Psalms became the source of consolation and strength in turbulent times. Small formats enabled readers to carry the book with them using the Book of Consolation at any time and place. The ease with which the book was carried was the decisive factor in the choice of format, which was important for non-Catholic Catholics traveling to organized synods. Hence, non-Catholic typography opted for smaller formats, while Catholics chose the bigger versions. Protestant soldiers were also used to a greater extent as song books during church services. That is why they were equipped with sheet music and their format was reduced so that they could simply be carried in a pocket. It is worth mentioning that along with the appearance of a smaller format, though impoverished, the price got reduced, which made the book widely available for masses for people. And content. Printed Psalters in Polish contained different aids facilitating understanding of the text, so called meta text, material identification of the print, like title, pages, printer's mark, and introductory material, along with the inspired text. Title pages are not limited just to provide the title of a work, but specify it its content, function, and purpose, present the translator, the basis and method of translation, determine confessional orientation of printing, and advertise the translation. The title page of Wujek Salta, for example, contains almost all the elements mentioned above. Um, it can be translated as uh, David Salta, now from Latin and Greek and Hebrew into Polish, meticulously translated with commentaries and annotations by Jakub Wujek, a theologian from Societatis Jesu, with the permission of the superiors, subjected to the discernment of the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, in the 1616 and 1626 editions of Wujek Salta, the reason and addressee, addressees of the reprint were added. Now at the demand of numerous nuns who do not know Latin but wish to say the Salta, it is printed without commentaries and annotations. Uh, Raise Salter title provides uh, an equally rich set of information. David Salter, which seems uh, to be the right foundation of all Christian writings, now translated anew into the Polish language, though not with the same words, uh, which cannot be, but that every verse is rendered according to the Latin language. The argument, that is the understanding of things uh, about which the prophet spoke, before each psalm is written in a short form. A short prayer is also written after each psalm, similar in its content to the psalm. A list of these books you will find, honorable reader, at the end. Dedications and other additional elements, like letters of dedication, emblems, poems, indicate the genesis of an edition and locate uh, located in the context of contemporary social relations. Among the uh, 58 examined editions of Salter, 19 possess 
dedications. A gradation of dedications can be noted. Editions of the entire Bible were, with the exception of the Nasvish Bible, dedicated to the kings of Poland. Four uh, out of 23, 23 editions of the New Testament uh, were also dedicated to the royals. Uh, as for the Psalms, three editions of uh, the Salt of Ray were dedicated to Sigismund the Old, and the reprint of the Psalter from the Brest Bible was dedicated to Anna Jagiellonka, who became king, uh, the king of Poland in uh, though a woman, in 1575. The remaining soldiers were dedicated to dukes, magnates, wealthy nobles, and bishops. The dedicators were usually editors, printers, translators, and publishers who financed a given edition. Dedications had the following functions, economic function, dedications connected with the remuneration which covered the cost prestigious functions. The prints were a gift which evoked kindness, strengthened friendship, and expressed gratitude. Dedications given to kings, bishops, and other important people in the kingdom had a particularly prestigious function. Promotional function. The dedicated people exercised their initiative to meet the new needs of the Renaissance period. While emphasizing the value of the work, they sometimes solicited uh, personal fame and memory of posterity. They advertised their printing houses, uh, aesthetically printed to date novel works, which were fashionable and preceded uh, by a glare of publicity, could count on better sale and, as a result, better material reward in the form of a sizable profit. Polemical and apologetic function, the person the work was dedicated to was informally obliged to defend it and propagate it, which was significant in the case of polemical texts. The elements introducing um, the read and accompanying it. The text of Psalms was preceded by forewords and prefaces, which justified its emergence and presented the reason for a new translation or edition, informed the reader of the translation technique and of the source text of translation. One could find words of encouragement to read the divine word, suggestions concerning a determined method of reading and interpretation of the text. Only the Psalter of Vujek included an introduction, which was an attempt at uh, the academic approach to the study of the Bible and text criticism. Psalters were often equipped with commentaries for the reading of the Psalms, sometimes with the commentaries for given Psalms or parts of them, with prayers accompanying particular Psalms various registers and uh, indexes like liturgical, thematic hymns and songs used in the divine office were also added to the psalms. Printed psalters comprised sometimes marginal notes of different kinds, concordances, philological notes, notes concerning criticism of the text, short commentaries and summarizing notes. Uh, the richest equipped edition of the Psalter was uh, Vujek Psalter from 1594. The idea behind uh, equipping the Vujek Psalter with adequate aids uh, was to provide readers uh, with material to study text, the result of which was to be of service in religious documentation. And now illustrative material. So illustrations in Psalters uh, in the Polish language can be divided into two groups, heraldic and uh, those connected with the text of Psalms. Uh, so heraldic illustrations, uh, the emblems of the addressees of the work had similar functions to dedications. Uh, in the case of printer's marks or emblems of other creators of books, they constituted a kind of signature. 
illustrations of biblical themes constitute the most numerous group. The most common uh, illustrative motive in Polish soldiers uh, is uh, King David praying, sometimes with a harp in his hand, or, or other scenes uh, from David's life. These illustrations uh, unambiguously link the Psalter to David and the events of his life and encourage a prayerful reading of the Psalms, especially the prayer of praise. In the Krakow Psalter from 1532 and 1535, an ornamental initial with the bust of Christ uh, can be seen at the opening of Psalm 1, a clear encouragement to a Christological interpretation of the Psalter. Perhaps the passion motives in some editions of Ruber Glaber's Psalter are intended to encourage a Christological interpretation of the Psalms. Part five, functional development. In Polish biblical editing, functional development can also be not no noticed. Biblical text advisability constitutes the fundamental function of each and every biblical prince. Other functions bestowed on the book by its creators depend on the assumption and realization of this very function. The functions of the salt the Psalter include devout function, assistance in personal religious life, assistance in ex experiencing the liturgy, and the Psalter in Polish as a prayer book, meditation book, church hymn book, or assistance in uh, reciting the officium. The second is ideological function. The Psalter as tool used for spreading the ideas, uh, humanistic ideas, for example, is Kohanowski's uh, Psalter. Religious reformation and counter-reformation, polemical propaganda function, uh, for example, yeah, Lubelczyk's Psalter, Wujek Psalter, national, the mere use of the text in Polish aroused national identity. Uh, a well-known quote from uh, the poem Do Tego Co Czytał to the one who read by Mikołaj Ray in Polish, a niechaj narodowie wżdy postronni znają, iż Polacy nie gęsi, iż swój język mają, in uh, English translation, let all, all the neighboring nations know that the Polish people are not geese and they have their own language. This idea was put into practice by Ray, among others, by translating the Psalter into Polish, which was an aid to praying in Polish. Dedications offering the Psalter to kings and queens, Zygismund the Old and Anna Jagiellonka, were also uh, were also not without significance. Education function, it's a bringing, a, a bringing and formation of moral attitudes, moral sense suggested by so-called argumenta, Lessons in reading and interpretation of a text, for example, distinguishing between different meanings of scripture in argumenta and commentaries uh, also visible on title pages, critical reading, handling different versions and element of text, text, textual criticism. Getting acquainted with biblical history, for example, the history of the King David. The last part, six, 
the causes of development of Polish Psalter editing. The data presented above show the dynamism, dynamism of development of Polish biblical editing in the period of Renaissance, especially in relation to the Psalters in Polish. Finally, it is worth trying uh, to system, systematize them. In chronologi chronological order, the appearance and development of humanism became the root cause of development of Polish biblical editing. The humanists searched for ancient wisdom, educational uh, patterns, and mat material for philological research in the Holy Scripture. The Bible also constitutes the source of poetic inspiration for humanists. Humanists are also uh, credited with the creation of intellectual foundations owing to which the translation and publishing of the Holy Scripture was possible. The translation and reading of the Psalter in the national languages is perfectly in keeping with the spirit of the age. The development of Polish language constitute an important factor which had an influence on the development of Polish writing and editing, also the biblical one in the 16th century. The Psalter in Polish is today one of the most important source for the study of the origins of the Polish language. Adequate economic conditions were indispensa indispensable uh, for the development of the printing industry. This was particularly true for such demanding and expensive prints as biblical texts. Around the mind of the 16th century, such conditions came to exist in Krakow. Printers from Krakow, the Scharfenbergs, Dietor, Ungler, Wiesbienta, were rich enough to finance the printing of the whole Bible. Almost 70% of the Psalter in Polish was uh, published in Krakow. In the second half of the 16th century, the support of Reformation provided by magnates led to the appearance of an economic base also beyond Krakow, uh, which was crucial, crucial for a costly printing of the Bible. During this period, Psalters were published in Brest on the Book River, uh, Rakow, Gdańsk and Torun. At the beginning of the 17th, 17th century, when the economic conditions of reformation impoverished, problems connected with translation and printing of the Bible appeared, for example, with the works uh, on the so-called Gdańsk, Danzig Bible. The Renaissance period was also the time of the reformation and Kant Reformation, which greatly strengthened interest in matters of religion and especially the Bible. Consequently, there was a great demand for, from the public for biblical text in national language. The Bible in the national languages became the site of religious polemics which further increased the production of translations and editions. Since the mind of the 16th century, religious polemics was the most significant factor uh, securing the development of Polish biblical editing. The emergence, development, divisions, and the uh, twilight of reformation and uh, continuous strengthening of Kant-Reformation constitute the fundamental 
reason for the appearance of new biblical translations. Transformations in denomination in Poland reflected in the, are reflected in the dynamics, dynamics of biblical editing development. The need for faith polemics led to the emergence of biblical prints of complicated content, which became a kind of religious weapon equipped with all the necessary tools. Thank you for your patience and attention. Thank you, Professor Pitkiewicz, very much for this comprehensive overview of uh, uh, the manuscripts and early prints um, of the Psalter in Polish, um, and uh, uh, also for uh, showing us the links, uh, uh, connections uh, between the Psalter uh, in Polish and um, uh, politics, devotion, translation. Thank you so much. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, uh, Dr. <coughs> Monika Szela Badzińska for her assistance uh, in translation. And um, I'd like to um, open the floor for uh, discussion and questions now. Uh, so anyone who would like to, I, I, th I think that uh, Michael Kuczynski wants to ask a question. So the floor is yours. Hello, thank you. Thank you so much. That was a fascinating uh, paper. I have a, a very specific question about, I think it was slide um, 33, perhaps the the title page to Wuszek's, um Psalter. He was a Jesuit, wasn't he? A Jesuit um, translator. And you had the title page up, which uh, had a translation about how this, this translation was done for nuns. I uh, believe it was 33. 33. 33, yeah. Uh -huh, okay. Ah, there we go. Um, I was wondering about the uh, statement there on the title page. It is printed without commentaries and annotations, because I think about this um, this presentation in contrast with a psalter that you know I'm much preoccupied with, Richard Rollo's English psalter which uh, was probably also translated uh, for a nun or nuns, but um, contains a uh, commentary derived from, as, as Rolla uh, calls it, uh, you know, learned, learned doctors. So the idea, the idea in the Middle English Psalter is that these nuns cannot use the Psalter properly without the commentaries. But here the idea seems to be that the commentaries are either unimportant or um, of secondary importance. So I was interested in maybe your, your remarking on that. Uh, thank you for this question. Pozwolę sobie odpowiedzieć po polsku, skorzystam z tłumacza. Uh, so I would, uh, I, my answer will be in Polish, and uh, I will ask the translator to translate my my my, my answer, my reply. Otóż w renesansowej Polsce psałterze były przedrukowywane w różnych formach z różnym wyposażeniem. Uh, in the Pol uh, in the Polish uh, in the Renaissance Poland, uh, the psalters were uh, edited with additional commentaries. I, I na przykład psałtyż Jakuba Wójka, który tutaj widzimy, uh, the of Jakub Wujek, we can see here, był przedrukowywany w renesansie czterokrotnie. Uh, was printed four times uh, during the renaissance period. I, najpierw został wydrukowany uh, first it was printed w 1594 roku. Uh, in 1594. Uh, 94, yes. Mm -hmm. I ten psał też był bardzo bogato wyposażony w noty, w komentarze, właściwie we wszystko, co było możliwe. So it included uh, commentaries, uh, additional glosses, notes, uh, everything that, that was possible to add in a sorter. 
Tutaj na przykład mamy dwie strony z tego psałterza, gdzie widać elementy wyposażenia. We can see two pages from the psalter with all those additions in the margins. Podobnie był wyposażony ten sam psałterz w pierwszym wydaniu Biblii Wujka z 1599 roku. Uh, the, a similar edition from uh, 1990, 1999 was also equipped with lots of such commentaries in the margins, mm. the logical notes, as you can see. Ale właśnie te e, później psałterze, które się pojawiły w XVII wieku, the psalters that were printed in the 17th century, zawierały tekst psałterza Bójka, the text of the, uh, of Jakub Bójek, ale zostały pozbawione komentarzy i całego metatekstu. I racje ku temu były ro rozmaite. There were many reasons behind it. Po pierwsze, obniżało to koszt druku. So first the cost of the print without the commentaries it was lower. I cenę książki. The price was lower without the commentaries. E, po drugie książka stawała się mniejsza. Te, ten psał też, który tutaj widzimy z 1626 roku jest mm -hmm. w dwunastce drukowany. Second the psalter was uh, the size of the psalter was uh, significantly lower. So this one we can see here The 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 the, the font was twelve. No, font was format, 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 format twelve. Yes. A, a więc ta książka była bardziej poręczna i najprawdopodobniej właśnie chodziło o to, że zakonnice potrzebowały takiej książki, żeby iść po prostu do chóru czy do kościoła, żeby się modlić. A prawdopodobnie w swojej biblioteczce miały również wydanie i całej Biblii. Albo też właśnie psałterza z tymi komentarzami. When the size was small, it was easy to carry it uh, by the nuns uh, to the to the choir, to uh, to the chapel to, uh, to pray, and uh, they also had uh, the. Nie miały w bibliotece też Biblii i psałterz z komentarzami. So in the library, they probably had the, the Bible and the psalter together with the commentaries. So there they could read the commentaries. Także nie były pozbawione właśnie tych komentarzy i odpowiedniego ukierunkowania na e, e, prawidłową lekturę psalmu. Okay, so they had access to commentaries that were not devoid of it, of this opportunity, but it was easier for them to carry it. I tutaj na tym przykładzie bardzo dobrze widać, jak zmienia się funkcja książki zależnie od jej formatu. So we can use this example to show that the function of the sort of changes depending on the size. Size format. Mm -hmm. I to, są, to jest właśnie ten aspekt bibliologiczny, który się znalazł w tytule e, tego, tego wystąpienia. Okay, it is this biblical, uh, bibliological Bibliologi. aspect uh, that, uh, that was uh, added uh, even to the title. Tak, a więc po prostu książka o wiele mniejsza, mieszcząca się właściwie w ręce, mm -hmm. I zakonnica idzie sobie do chóru, a kiedy wróci do swojej celi, może korzystać sobie z książki, która jest, ma ten sam tekst psałterza, ale jest wyposażona w większą liczbę not, komentarzy i tak dalej. So this format, the size is smaller, it is easier to carry, but at the same time, the nuns had an access to, uh, to psalters with the, the whole apparatus. I też warto dodać, że Biblia Wujka, pierwsze wydanie Biblii Wujka było drukowane in folio. The first edition of Wujek Sote was printed in folio. A więc była to księga duża, księga, którą trzeba czytać, kiedy large, leżała na stole. Yes, it was a large book then that could only be read uh, when located on the table. I nie nadawała się jako jak pomoc do odmawiania psałterza w kościele. It was difficult to carry it to the church um, to use it during the service. Pierwsze wydanie psałterza jako oddzielnej książki. The, the first edition of the Psalter as a separate book. Z 1594 roku. Uh, from uh, printed in 1514. Uh, Było drukowane w czwórce, in, in quarto. Was printed in In kwarta, a więc znowu była książka większa, tak? A to ta dwunastka 
idealnie nadawała się po prostu do tego, żeby zabrać ją do kościoła. So it was a larger book and that in the 12 uh, was ideal to carry it to church uh, for Sundays. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, I think we have a question in chat um, from Maya Hordiewicz. Uh, it's a longer um, note, so let me just go through it. Thank you for a wonderful talk. I wasn't able to join with audio. Sorry for that. I have a small question. Somewhere at the beginning, you mentioned how popular Psalter in Poland was in the Middle Ages and early Renaissance. What would you pinpoint as the major reason behind it in terms of social, political, cultural events? And was it a sudden spike in popularity or rather a gradual process? One, one moment, please. Okay. The question is in chat, you can open it and you will see it all along. Otóż y, y, aż tak za dużo na ten temat nie możemy powiedzieć. So I can't say too much about it. Y, ponieważ tak jak widzieliśmy, no, zachowało się dziewięć tych zabytków z tekstami psalmów i to jest no, i dużo i mało. Because only nine psalters Uh, nine editions uh, are extant, and so uh, the number is, uh, well, on the one hand, uh, we have many examples, but uh, on the other hand, the number is quite small, too small. Poza tym, jak widzieliśmy, spora część tych zabytków to jest jedna karta z jakimś fragmentem psalmu tylko. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, uh, if we can see a relic, it is only one uh, One card. One card with a text, with the text. A very small piece of text, Sometimes. one verse, something. Jednak można, były prowadzone pewne badania nad całymi wydaniami psałterza. So research was conducted into some editions of the Psalter. Dosyć szczegółowe badania były prowadzone nad psałterzem floriańskim. Detailed research was carried out into The Florian Sauter, który jest związany, związany z osobą, związany najczęściej z osobą świętej Jadwigi, żony Jagieły. Which is uh, uh, connected with the wife of uh, one of the Polish uh, kings, uh, Jagiełło. Jagiełło, Władysław Jagiełło. Władysław. I zawartość tej księgi pokazuje nam, mamy tam tekst psałterza po polsku, werset po polsku, mm -hmm. werset po łacinie i werset po niemiecku. Mamy trzy, trzy, może pokażę, bo mam tutaj. So, in this edition we can see three text in three languages, the Polish text, the Latin text and German. And German. Oh. Um. I proszę zobaczyć, że tekst jest trójjęzyczny. So the text, you can see the text is in three languages. Są to trzy najczęściej używane języki na dworze Jagiellonów. The three most spoken languages in the Jagiellonian court. A plecionka tutaj po lewej stronie koło inicjału B. This image. Close to the initial B. Jest związana z osobą świętej Jadwigi. Is connected with the person of Saint Hedwig. I ona on też się pojawia na innych przedmiotach, które najprawdopodobniej do niej należały. Sometimes you can see this image, this grid on other things that belonged to Saint Hedwig. Są różne hipotezy, które mówią o powstaniu tego psałterza. So we have a few hypotheses behind the origins of this psalter. Jedna z nich na przykład mówi, że psał też powstał jako e, prezent z okazji narodzin e, córki, narodzin dziecka przez świętą Jadwigę. So the, one of the hypotheses is that the Sousa was printed, was created as a present 
after the birth of the daughter of Saint Hedwig. Ale niestety po porodzie zmarło i dziecko i matka. But after the, the labor, unfortunately, both the daughter and the mother died. No i po prostu książka została bez osoby, która miała ją ofiarować. And the book could not be dedicated to anybody. Jak można zobaczyć, no książka prawdopodobnie służyła do odmawiania psalmów. Mamy łacińską wersję, mamy polską, niemiecką, czyli najprawdopodobniej służyła do modlitwy. Takie miała przeznaczenie. So we can see that probably the book was intended to say the prayers, to read the psalms during the prayers. Tak, no oczywiście widać, że wykonanie też jest królewskie, to od razu można... So we can see that the... Uh, the book is uh, the ornaments are a rich uh, royal. Tak, ja może pokażę jeszcze tutaj tą listę i, i zrobię taki pewien komentarz do tych zabytków. Okay, let me show you the list of these uh, Salters. Tak, to pierwszy Florian Salter jakoś żeśmy sobie umieścili właśnie w tych um, realiach tak właśnie historycznych. So the first Salter, we can see the Florian Salter was... Uh, presented uh, against uh, the uh, historical uh, background. background yes okay. psalterium trilingue to jest próbka psalterza floriańskiego próbka ten znaczy po prostu pisarz zrobił wzór jak chciał pisać psalterz floriański po prostu Zrobił na tej kartce kilka takich wariantów, jakby mógł pisać i pokazał prawdopodobnie temu, kto to zamawiał. A dla, dlatego zawiera tylko jeden werset. Okay, so this Salter is a kind of a modern Salter. Uh, how Salter should be printed, it, it contains only one verse, uh, probably because uh, it was only intended as a kind of a model. Mm -hmm. uh, tak, co jest ciekawe, ten e, pierwszy werset psalmu pierwszego pochodzi z innego tłumaczenia niż to, które weszło do całego psalterza. So the, interestingly, the first verse uh, is taken from another translation than the remaining part of the psalm. Stąd wnioskujemy, że tych przekładów średniowiecznych mogło być więcej, ale nie dochowały się do naszych czasów. We can infer from this that uh, the number of translations of the psalms in uh, in this period, this period of time was even greater. But we, but we, we do not have them now. Tak, następna taka grupa psalmów to są psalmy pokutne. Proszę zobaczyć, jest jeden zabytek, jest kolejny zabytek. Tak, to psalm pokutny to były takie pojedyncze karty, które zawierały psalm i one służyły najprawdopodobniej do jakichś celów liturgicznych. Na przykład można je było przy pogrzebie odmawiać. So we can also see uh, soldiers that only contain one psalm uh, with the... Uh, Miserere psalm. Yes. <laughs> For, uh, to say, the, uh, to express repentance and contrition. I nawet na tej karcie właśnie medyckiej, karcie świecińskiego, widać odciski palców, tak jak trzymano tę kartę, odmawiając ją. So we can see even the fingerprints. Somebody um, held this uh, salter when praying. Tak, proszę zobaczyć kolejny psalter, psalter puławski. On zawiera całą księgę psalmów. Puławy salter. Tak, książka, książka jest o wiele mniejsza niż psalter floriański. The book is considerably smaller than the Florian salter. I najprawdopodobniej ta książka służyła jako modlitewnik. Wiemy to stąd, że przy psalmach są takie wskazówki podczas jakiego dnia i jakich nieszporów dane psalmy się odmawia. No popatrzmy na, na przykład na psał też w tłumaczeniu Walentego Wróbla. Tu więcej by mogła powiedzieć pani, pani Magda i pani Monika, bo zajmowały się badaniem tego psałterza. Tak, 
Ten psał też był pomyślany też jako modlitewnik, jako księga do medytacji. It was also intended as a prayer book, as a book of meditation. Zawierał e, tekst łaciński, przynajmniej incipty tekstów, e, werset łaciński, później w drukowanej wersji w całości te wersety się pojawiały i komentarz, krótki komentarz do każdego wersetu, czy prawie każdego. It contained Latin translations, at least the, the initial introductory verses uh, were in Latin. Tak, po łacinie, bo łacinie były przynajmniej fragmenty tych wersetów w rękopisie, albo całe wersety później w drukowanej wersji. So sometimes uh, selected, selected verses and sometimes whole songs. Popatrzmy na przykład na Biblię Królowej Zofii. The, let us look at the Bible of Queen Sophia, Queen Sophia. Ta Biblia zawierała przynajmniej cały Stary Testament. It contained the At least the whole Old Testament. Proszę zobaczyć, że znowu Biblia jest wiązana z jedną z żon, z, z Jagieł, Jagieły, z, z, ze słynną Sonką, Matką Królów. Przed wojną jeszcze istniały resztki pierwszego tomu mm-hmm. tej Biblii, które były przechowywane w szaroszpatach na Węgrzech. Before the Second World War, tak. we, could, uh, we had some fragments of this uh, Bible in it was uh, uh, kept in Hungary. In Hungary, in szaroszpatach. szaroszpatach. Po wojnie księga zginęła, a tom drugi Gdzieś krążył tutaj prawdopodobnie na Dolnym Śląsku. After the Second World War, this Bible was lost. So during the war it was lost. And the second volume of it was probably somewhere in the Lower Silesian. Ponieważ znaleźliśmy kilka kart z drugiego tomu w oprawach, mm-hmm. e, które tutaj na Dolnym Śląsku były wyko- wykonywane. We could find a few cards from the second volume in the covers, mm-hmm. Bible covers that we found here. Tak, i prawdo, prawdopodobnie no, tutaj mieliśmy całą Biblię i psał też test tutaj był jako część Biblii, czyli znowu ktoś na dworze królewskim chciał mieć tekst biblijny i go czytać, w tym psał też. Mm-hmm. So we had this Psalter as a separate edition, so uh, we infer that somebody here um, uh, from the... Uh, tak, no kolejna kategoria to są typowe modlitewniki, które oprócz innych modlitw czy pieśni zawierały również psalmy. Another category includes prayer books with the selected psalms. That contain this number 10 and 11. So we can see number 10 and number 11. So prayer books with selected songs. A więc no, myślę, że trochę tak nakreśliłem na tych przykładach tło właśnie takie też no, polityczne, związane z dworem Jagielonów, czy też właśnie takie tło duchowe, które towarzyszyło powstawaniu tych zabytków. So I hope I managed it to find the, the background political and historical background of the soldiers in the Jagiellonian court. Thank you. That was another mini lecture. Thank you so much. Uh, um, one uh, tiny detail. Unfortunately, I cannot claim credit for any research regarding uh, the uh, soldier of Wrubel, um, it's uh, Magda only. So over to her because she is the next person who'd like to ask a question. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, the the, the person that I worked on the Żołtarz David with was uh, Professor Jolanta Klimak-Gronska, but I do look forward to working with you, Monica, on a particular text. So I think that is a nice way of, uh, I, I think, inspiring us to to actually work together. Well, as a matter of fact, I have three questions, but I do realize that there's no time for three questions. So I'll just 
uh, ask them and you choose which one to answer. Is that all right? So my first question, because you mentioned several times that there were 12 independent translations of the Book of Psalms. So my obvious question is, how does one define independent? Um, the Krakowski Sota is claimed on the title page to have been nowo pilnie przełożony, but um, it is also said by many researchers that it, continue, it continues the Floriański and uh, uh, Buławski tradition. So that would be question one. How does one define independence in a translation, the originality? Potential question two to choose from is you classify translation, translations into literal, poetic paraphrases and prose paraphrases. And that again is a classification that I would be very much interested in how to execute it because I mean, as long as it's very literal, you know, when it's a paraphrase, uh, when it's periphrastic, you know but that things in between, so it's a scale rather than a binary opposition. So that would be a potential question too. How do you classify a translation into literal or paraphrastic? And potential question too. The question three, it's very selfish because I just want to know something for my current research is, um, you talked about the argumenta to the Psalms. What uh, what are the sources for these uh, argu uh, um, arguments? Okay, I mean they will be different for different for different translations, but how do you look for them? Where do you find them? So I'd be very happy with one answer, one answer to one of these questions. So I will choose the second question. How do we classify? I am not a language scholar, and probably my research is a little bit on the basis of the assumption of self-reliance. So I am not a linguist, so that is why my research is something I devised myself. Jeśli chodzi o klasyfikację, znaczy poszedłem po takiej bardzo takiej najprostszej linii. As far as the classification is concerned, so I chose the simplest line of reasoning. Jeśli przekład miał jakiś metr, miał rym, miał rytm, to klasyfikowałem to jako przekład poetycki typu Kochanowski, Lubelczyk. Bardzo często były tam też nuty do śpiewania. No i wiadomo, że nie mamy tutaj do czynienia z literalnym przekładem, tylko musi to być parafraza, prawda? Tak, to jest pierwsza rzecz, to, to dosyć było proste. Po drugie, jeżeli chodzi o prozaiczne e, e, tłumaczenia. So maybe I will translate the first part. Mm -hmm. So um, the poetic translation, so usually when I found some uh, rhymes, uh, rhythm, uh, I classified this as a poetic translation, for example, the translation of Kochanowski or Lubelczyk. Sometimes the translations included musical notes, so that is why I also uh, classified it as um, poetic. Jeśli chodzi o e, prozaiczne parafrazy. So as far as the uh, prose, prosaic translation. W większości przypadków było to bardzo proste, bo sami, e, powiedzmy, czy, wy, czy wydawca, czy, czy autor tłumaczenia pisze o tym na stronie tytułowej. So usually the classification was simple because both the editor and the translator, they, they write about it in, in the introductions and the practices. Or in the title page, oh, in the title like page. in uh, Ray's Salter. Tutaj na, na, na przykład właśnie psał też Reja, czy psał też Milejewskiego, gdzie wyraźnie jest to powiedziane. Po prostu, no to, to było dla mnie proste. So for tak. example, in the Salters by Ray and Milejewski, uh, it was explicitly written on the title page. Tak. No jeżeli chodzi o literalne przekłady, no to są te przekłady typu przekład wujka, Przekład Brzeski, Budnego, Gdańsk, to są typowo filologiczne przekłady. Ja trochę badałem te przekłady i to widać, że albo idzie przekład za tekstem Wulgaty, albo za tekstem hebrajskim, no po prostu oddaje tekst hebrajski dosyć wiernie. Wszystkie te, wszystkie te przekłady trzy. Literal translations include, for example, the translation by Wujek, Uh, the breast translation, the translation by Budin, and uh, you can see that it is the philological translation. Uh, the text 
mimics the Vulgate translate, uh, translation, and uh, it is clearly seen in the structure of sentences. Najwięcej problemów oczywiście miałem z żołtarzem e, w przekładzie Walentego Wrubla łamany na Andrzeja Glabera. That's my question, because that's uh, my area of interest. So I had the greatest problems with this assault by Wrubel and Glauber. Ponieważ, jak wiemy, ten przekład, no są różne hipotezy. Mówią, jedni mówią tłumaczenie, inni mówią parafraza, jeszcze inni mówią, powiedzmy, coś w rodzaju jakiegoś takiego przekładu teologicznego. So some people classified as a paraphrase, as a translation, as a theological translation. Tak, a więc tam też mamy, w tym, w tym wersecie mamy tekst, powiedzmy tekstu, fragment tekstu natchnionego, ale pojawiają się nawiasy, w których Wróbel czy Glaber wkłada właśnie pewne takie komentarze, które ukierunkowują sposób lektury tego tekstu. So we can see the inspired text and inside some brackets are inserted with additional explanations that um, that affect the interpretation of the song. Tak, i też znając pracę właśnie pani, pani Magdy i pani Moniki, no trzeba przyznać im rację, że ten psał też wymaga jeszcze sporo badań, bo ten problem podstawy, czy też problem z techniki przekładu tutaj jeszcze jest taką chyba, takim zagadnieniem nieprzebadanym do końca. So I, I, I can agree with the research of Ms. Magda and Ms. Monika that the SOTA requires lots of additional work uh, in terms of uh, the source text of this translation. Podstawa? Tak, podstawa i technika przekładu. Tak. And translation tak. techniques. Bo, bo z jednej strony mamy dwa rękopisy, których relacja między sobą też do końca nie jest zbadana. Okay, so we have two manuscripts and the relation between them is... Uh, Not research yet. Tak. I jeżeli dobrze pamiętam, ja miałem w ręce ten skórnika. Zresztą gdzieś tu mam jakieś zdjęcie. E, tak, mam tutaj e, tego kurnickiego. To e, tutaj proszę zobaczyć, że e, właśnie jest przekład polski, jest ten komentarz, ale e, na przykład łacińskie, łaciński tekst nie jest w całości. Czasami są tylko początki wersetów. Tak. So I have the translation, the Kurnik translation, uh, and we can see there the Polish text and the Latin text, but sometimes the Latin text uh, only selected verses, verses or Początek. a few initial words of a given psalm are in Latin. A więc jest problem podstawy przekładu tutaj. Mm -hmm. So we have a problem with the source text for this translation. Po drugie jest problem relacji między jednym rękopisem a drugim. We also can identify some problems with the relation between one manuscript and the second the other. I kolejny problem to jest też relacja manuskryptu do tekstu drukowanego przez Glabera. And another problem is the relation of this manuscript with the printed text of Glauber. A więc problem jest bardzo złożony i, i tak jak w tej tabelce, którą pokazywałem, napisałem literal łamane na parafraza ze znakiem zapytania. So that is why I wrote literal uh, slash paraphrase with a question mark. Yes, okay. Thank you very much. Yes, I, I do agree that the, the, the relationship between the two manuscripts has not been examined at all because the, the information about the second manuscript has not been in any circulation, although it has been in the Jagiellonian library since 1928 and nobody actually examined it. So I'm, I'm grateful that you mentioned it because now it is receiving more circulation. Thank you. Thank you very much for answering this question. I think uh, we need to be winding up now, more or less. What do you think, Monica? Yes, uh, I think um, that our time is just about up. I wanted to ask a question, but I will postpone it uh, till uh, sometime later. So just before I uh, uh, give the floor to Magda again, Uh, I would just like to uh, attract your attention to the fact that uh, Kinga has just given us a link to uh, the recordings of the previous sessions uh, at the Nanovik Institute. So you can all see the link um, uh, in the chat now. And uh, okay, over to you, Magda. 
Thank you. Okay, so that is that is me again. Um, obviously, inviting you for our next meeting, mm -hmm. uh, where we'll be listening to Monika Opalinska's uh, absolutely fascinating story about a recently discovered Salter manuscript. And this is really, really a detective work. And the title of the talk is Putting the Pieces Back Together on the Reconstruction of the Fragmentary and Salter. And the talk is on the 16th of November. So that would be the third, not the fourth Thursday of November. You will receive the um, reminding emails um, as usual. And we will also try to send the um, confirmation link so that you don't have to dig into your email boxes looking for um, for your personalized link to join um, to join our talk. Thank you very much. That's the last slide. Thanks a lot.